Good morning, and Merry Christmas, and welcome to the Slow Pace Knitting Space. My name is Michelle Matthews, and today is December 18th, 2021. <coughs> I'm a knitter and designer living in Northern Alberta, Canada, and I'm super excited to show you what I've been working on lately. So, uh, but first, I'm wearing some knits, so I'd like to show those off as well. This shawl is called the Jolene shawl. And this was my first ever brioche project. And I picked it because I wanted to do brioche, but I was afraid of something really hard. I was afraid of something really, really easy that would become boring. So I picked this pattern because it has brioche and it has lace. And so it was good for learning a new technique, but not getting bored on the strips in between. So, yeah. And this is knit with Sweet Georgia Yarns, Tough Love Sock for the pink in the colorway Candy Apple. And then this silver yarn, I'm pretty sure is Boss Lady Yarns, Silver Hair Don't Care, but Boss Lady doesn't dye yarn anymore. So can't really get this except maybe from people's stash um, and the second thing that I'm wearing is my Nordic socks that I made uh, last winter but this year so in January and this I wanted something that was really simple to knit so I picked something that had mostly was mostly plain but right here had some technique to it and these here are called Latvian braids and they look intense but they're actually not very hard to do and they look really nice. So this um, Nordic socks are by Sandra C on Ravelry and the shawl is by Raina K. Oh and these are knit with Farmer's Daughter fibers. This is not a sock yarn but it's was leftovers that I had that worked. Yeah. Oh, so, uh, last week, no, two weeks ago, I talked about participating in the hashtag on Ravelry or on Instagram, get your yarn wishes granted. And um, I forgot to mention that I, I also granted wishes. So I sent some people some patterns and I sent a few people some minis which I'll put a picture and I sent somebody uh, a full skein of worsted yarn that I wasn't going to use and um, I sent someone in UK I sent her some stitch markers and we had a little conversation about the shipping she said I hope it's not too bad I'm in the UK and I said yeah I know how it goes I'm in Canada and she said well, okay I'll send you something too and so she did send me something and I got it uh, recently and this she sent me this little tin and uh, it's really cute it works like a matchbox I've never had a tin like this but I have seen them and there's something about just the old-fashioned ness and coziness it reminds me of my grandma um, although if she had one like this, she would have had one with teddy bears on it because she was very, um, teddy bears were near and dear to her. She used to make some. Actually, I have some in here that she made. Um, she made this guy and she made this one with this little blankie. I just think it's so cute. Um, yeah. So she used to make teddy bears. She used to knit. She used to quilt and, and watercolor paint. Um, yeah. uh, and the second thing that came in from Get Your Yarn Wishes Granted was somebody sent me a stitch marker. They had this form that you filled out on their Instagram bio and you could fill out your address and everything. And so she gave me this cute little star stitch marker. 
Mm. And I want to show you, because I keep getting distracted, I want to show you my nails that I did. Um, there. I made my own holiday nails while we were watching It's a Wonderful Life. Um, yeah. I love It's a Wonderful Life, and I have to watch it every year at Christmas. And yeah. I've really been enjoying talking with people whenever they ask, what do you watch at Christmas time? Because um, I'm always looking for new Christmas movies, new to me ones. And last year we watched The Bishop's Wife and we watched White Christmas. I hadn't seen either of those before. And I actually really like The Bishop's Wife. And yeah, every year we watch the 1951 Alistair Sims Christmas Carol and It's a Wonderful Life and the animated The Grinch. Yeah. Okay. Another thing, maybe I spend too much time on Instagram, but another thing that happened on Instagram uh, at the end of November, beginning of December, was this charity auction being held for somebody in the States who her house burned down. Um, like, she had a lot going on recently, apparently, like a health crisis, uh, a relationship crisis, and she had just moved across the country and bought her own house, and then it burned down. And... She's a yarn dyer, and that, apparently that's about all she had left. So there was this charity auction hosted by Knitboop on Instagram for this other lady. And she had like 50 bundles of things you could buy, or things that were up for auction. And so I, you know, bid here, bid there. You get outvoted like instantly. And I noticed, um, or I suspected that a lot of these bids would happen in the first day and then it was a three day long auction. They would happen a lot in the first day and then kind of settled down. And so I started eyeing up uh, one I actually wanted and decided I'm gonna snipe this because I have been sniping auctions since I was a teenager. <laughs> my dad used to, my dad buys stuff on eBay a lot and he taught me when I was a teenager how to snipe, how to bid and all that. So. Basically, you wait till the last minute and you make your bid. But on eBay, you can put a top bid and it will automatically bid lower bids for you until it reaches that top point. And so you need to, if you're on eBay bidding last minute, you want to make sure that when you bid, you're not bidding your next bid, you put in your top. And so it will automatically do that until it reaches somebody's top bid. Um, so Instagram is not like that. It's your bid right now. And so I waited for the last moment and it was literally within the last minute, it was 6.59 and I bid and then kind of wait and wait and refresh and hope that you're not also on the ball and then seven o'clock came and I won the auction. And so what the auction was for was for an, an advent yarn box. And this is by So Happy Jane and it came in this box. It came on the 13th, I think. And this is her, she called it Floriography Hand Dyed Happy Holiday Cheer. Um, they, they, I think a lot of people are calling it like a holiday box or winter box and, and not quite so Christmas Advent. Just, um, I suppose because not everyone celebrates Christmas or it's not always Advent specific, but it's kind of a traditional thing coming with a countdown of 12 things to count down or 24 things to count down. And this one had 12 minis and I put them on the wall in the back or on the door. So I had 12 minis and a big solid one skein. And so I was wondering, what do you do with 12? Do you do one every other day until Christmas or do you do, um, do you wait until the 12th and then do the 12 days before Christmas or do you just do it 1 to 12 and then wait until Christmas to open the big one? I, I really don't know. Um, the 24 countdown advent things make it much simpler. <laughs> so I got this and there was, I since it was already basically half the month in, there was less than 12 days until Christmas and so what I thought I would do was I would open up until that day and then open one up each day until Christmas. 
So, before I show you the minis I've already opened up, I want to show you what else came in box. There was this nice plain bag, and inside there was this tape measure, and it says, So Happy Jane on it. You've probably all seen tape measures like this. I got one from my local yarn store and one of my kids broke it. And so I got another one from our local quilt supply store because the yarn store was out. And there was orange blossom honey lip balm. Personalized post-its that say, so happy Jane. You can't really tell, but along here is this like this faded floral circle too. It is not showing up at all. This finger massage ring. That's um, what it says on this side. And so, you know, the kids all wanted to try it. We took it out and you just kind of roll it on your fingers and I don't know I'll have to try it when my fingers are sore and see if it helps. And lastly, there was a little stitch marker. It's a, one of those wooden ones and it says hand dyed happy. These wooden ones are really nice because they're so light. And so people can, I don't know, they probably use a machine to carve into it, but they can do whatever they want on it and it will look pretty and be super light in your knitting. So I do like those. I have some other ones that I think they say boss lady. So there are little ASMR. And she came with instructions on how to do a countdown, sort of, um, or what to do with it, what inspired the pattern or the yarn, I mean, what inspired it and what sort of pattern you could do with it. She suggests not starting out on the first day with a whole new pattern. She suggests waiting until you see what they all look like and then making a pattern with them. And since I already had an advent project that I had started, I decided that I'm not going to start a new project with these new minis as they come out. And she also, uh, she inspired these based on flowers. And so she has a little cheat sheet about each flower, but it turns out it's also a spoiler list, so I haven't looked at it, <laughs> except for the first day or two, and then I realized what it was. So, on the first day, I pulled out this mini called Hellebore. There. It's mostly a tonal red. And these are all 20 gram minis, so that's decent. You know, five of those is 100 grams, that'll make a sock. And so with 12 of them, like 100 grams will make two socks. I could make a lot of ankle socks with this. If it took two skeins to make ankle socks, I could make like six pairs of ankle socks. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And then the second day was daffodil. I have to put my hand behind. I figured out that's how you make it focus is you hide the face. So for those of you new to knitting podcasts, that's why they always do that. So you're trying to get to focus on what's in front by creating a block. Anyway, yellow with some orangey speckles in it. The third day was tulip. And so it kind of has all different colors that tulips come in. The fourth day. No, I can't remember. What, I think this is the fourth day. The fourth day was this one. Sweet pea. I like the idea of this color more than I actually like this color. But this one has a mix, as her, I'm not sure if you could tell, it has a mix of warm purples and light purples in there. They all look, I mean cool, they all look kind of cool in this camera. But there is two different shades of a very light purple. And then yesterday was Peony, light pink. It's not really the same color as my skin, but there. 
And then I thought I would open today's on camera. So that's what I'll do. <clears throat> This one is called Poppy. And it is not quite so orange, it's kind of a reddish orange. Oh yeah. So what we have so far are some very bright, warm colors mostly. She wanted to make them look like a bouquet. And so we're getting very summery vibes right now, which I don't mind, I love summer. Yarn bouquet. Yarn stores sell yarn bouquets at holidays where you would give flower bouquets. Okay. So that's not the only bundle I won at the charity auction. I won another one that came with like three different things of yarn, but only one of them has come so far. And so what it is, is this fingering weight slub yarn. And I think that's the, tec the technical term. Uh, when, the, when this yarn has lots of bits in it, and it's kind of crinkly. I don't know how they make it crinkly like that when they spin it or whatever. But I love these colors. And I'm normally not into yarn that's like thick and thin or slubby. I, I just don't know what to do with it really because I'm a sock knitter. But the when I was thanking the yarn dyer for donating it and for the yarn, this is also made by Creative For You by Laura. Uh, I was saying my thank you, I got it, it's really nice. And she said, oh, you could make this pattern for it or some shawls. And she said, she uh, mentioned a pattern that I don't remember what it's called. <laughs> and I went and looked at it on Ravelry and it's this boxy shirt. Um, it had, it's meant to have a lot of positive ease so you would wear it over a tank top. And I actually think it would look really nice in these colors. And so I will make that maybe next summer. So yeah, these colors are right up my alley. I love cool tone blues, purples, greens, and I wear a lot of black. So a bit of pop of color here always, uh, I always makes me feel good and makes me excited to wear it. So yeah, that's all the new stuff. And now I want to show the Advent socks that I've been working on. The pattern that I'm doing is called Dropping Madness by Maria Ekblad and that will be linked in the show notes. Oh, I keep forgetting to mention this, but I want to mention at the beginning of my videos is that my videos are fully subtitled. For anybody who's watching who prefers or needs subtitles, I use a program that uh, produces them and then I go through it and correct the things and spell them correctly, capitalize them, Sometimes it, every a lot of the times when I say knit, it thinks I said get. So like just fixing it, making sure that it's correct. And then when I upload my video onto YouTube and Rumble, I put, I also upload the subtitles. And the only thing is on the Rumble app, it doesn't seem, you know, there doesn't seem to be an option to put subtitles on your video, like for the viewer to turn them on. So you would have to watch them on your maybe a tablet would work but you have to watch them probably through the browser or on your phone or i mean your computer to get the subtitles to work yeah so that's something i'm actually really proud about okay so i have made a lot of progress i think two weeks ago when i showed these we just had a toe so now we have a foot. So these are knit toe up. The pattern 
for the for the heel, it tells you to do a gusset with an afterthought heel. And that is just way too much heel for my foot. I don't need that much. Um, so I did a fish lips kiss heel, which is a $1 pattern on Ravelry. And it is this multi-page document, which tells you how to how to know when you're ready for the heel. And so what you do is you trace your foot and do some fancy math that she shows you. And then you end up with this line here where you start your heel. And so when you're knitting toe up, you will put it on here until it naturally reaches, there. put it on here until it naturally reaches that line. And then you start your heel with a fish lips kiss heel. And it, I don't have a high instep, so this pattern works really well for me. Anytime I do toe up uh, socks and the pattern for the heel is not something I want to do or doesn't have one, then I will do the fish lips kiss heel because it is very simple. It does a lot of the thinking for you. So this yarn, I almost like this side better. <laughs> it's hard to tell. I never want to knit striped socks because it's kind of boring, but they look so good. So maybe I should knit more striped socks. So this dark blue is Knit Picks Stroll Tweed in Prussian Heather. And then this light pink here is Manos del Uruguay Alegria in Petal. This tan we have Nitpick Stroll Tweed in Oyster Heather. And then this olive Nitpick Stroll Tweed in, uh, I don't remember, Basil? I'll put it on the screen and the screen will be right. This one is just Nitpick Stroll in Peapod. This teal is blown out, but it is just Actually, I think it's a sport weight acrylic that I got secondhand. This darker teal is Mary and Jade handmade. It was a sock set, a Christmas self striping yarn sock set, and this is the contrasting mini. So I don't think it had a color. This dark speckly greeny one is one I bought from someone's D stash sale. It is a rock and a tree blue spruce. And I don't think a rock and a tree dyes yarn anymore. This gray and blue speckled yarn is Sea Turtle Fiber Arts Starfish Fingering in Calm. Mm. This one here is Yarn Ink, who is an Albertan yarn dye and this is her colorway jazz and then this bottom one here that you can see is oh, house of la mode autumn twilight fingering kit which had a gray and then this autumny reds and oranges and pinks speckled oh dang it so that was a one-off that somebody bought on instagram and then i bought from their d stash a few years later when they had never used it Lucky for me. And this pink here is Sweet Georgia Yarns, Tough Love Sock in Orchid. And then back to the Mano Stella Uruguay in uh, Allegria in Petal. It's tricky when every yarn has three names. You have who made it, what that baseline is called, and then what the color is called. So there's so much to name. It's, I guess it's like cars. It's probably the same for cars. And that's why it's so confusing for me. <laughs> okay. So the, this is the first sock. I got it this far. And the second sock is not quite as far. But I don't think there was a second sock last time. So there's that. And I have worked up to here. And I haven't really been doing this in any specific adventy formula. Um, if maybe I entered December without any other gift knitting to do, then I would do, 
this every day gets a chunk and it would be all worked out but that's never happened so I just sit down uh, actually I do have a formula of how I do my knitting these days but when I sit down to work on this I just work on it and the stripes go by super quickly um, so it's been so much fun to change color and do new color and it's not going to be so much fun to sew in the ends but that's okay <laughs> um, but actually my knitting formula has been in the daytime when Logan is at work I will um, knit on his gift when I'm doing school with Diggory um, I'll sit beside him and we'll do the work and I'll knit while he does his worksheet and so I've been working on it. it's pretty steady that way and then when he comes home I work on this and then when the kids go to bed, I start working on Claire's gift, which I am going to... Claire doesn't watch my videos, so I guess I can show you. I was gonna do it in the holiday part, but I can show you after this. So I work on Claire's in the evenings, except this is a lot more fun. So I have a hard time putting this down when the kids go to bed. Especially when I was doing, I did the heel last night because it just required so much thinking and I can't, it's hard to do parts that need a lot of thinking when the kids are around. But I've reached this point, my plan had been go through all of these colors and then come back to the light pink and then do the zigzaggy part and then have it say Xmas 2020 and then switch to the dark blue again and do the cuff. And that will end up being somewhat short of socks. I thought that the heel would end up further down here. Oh, I'm running out of space. Just a sec. And we're back. This time I have my phone plugged into my computer. And so when I need to take the video off to make more space, I didn't even have to move my phone. So I feel really smart about that, even though I didn't do that on purpose. Oh well. <laughs> okay. So I just finished talking about, oh, I didn't finish. I was just talking about um, my Advent socks. And so my dilemma, I don't know why I always have a dilemma with my socks. And maybe it's because I don't just do them the way they say. I'd go, how can I make this more fun? Or how can I make this better? What can I do to play around with this? How can I have all the awesome packed into here as possible? <laughs> Which often leaves me going, hmm, what should I do? This awesome or that awesome? I don't know. And that's where I'm at right now. Do I make this into like a Christmas 2021 souvenir sort of sock advent thing to, of celebrating that or do I now that I have started pink again do I just knit the leg like the foot again and you know those would make very nice socks they would be lovely it's December 18th I don't know if I want to scramble to really rush to make two full-size socks. Maybe I would like short little Christmassy socks. Um, I really like the memories behind the socks that I'm making. Like the socks that I'm wearing right now, the Nordic socks, I made these when I was feeling a little burnt out and I was feeling really stressed, I think. And so I wanted something that was gentle and slow and interesting and fast. Slow thinking, fast in it. Something that would be a satisfying but relaxing thing to knit. And that's where I got these. And so this is probably taller than, well, this is probably taller than the sock I would end up making. But this is a nice size. And it, short socks fit under skinny pants, which though they may be on their way out, I still have some. I like wearing short socks with them, ankle-ish sort of socks. So there's that too. Uh, so <laughs> it's a dilemma. It's a dilemma I like having. And, oh, maybe I can make one of each. That would be so ugly. <laughs> I hate fraternal socks for myself. Um, but anyway, so I thought I would, I've got this sock to where I need to make that decision. And so I can either do it and see what I think, which will be pretty quick. There's not a lot left. Or I can get the other sock to that point and see what day is it, what do I think? Because I really want to finish these Christmas Eve or Christmas Day and have socks for me to wear Christmas Day and Boxing Day when I celebrate Christmas with uh, our family. So 
Who knows what I'll do? <laughs> I, I don't know yet. <sighs> okay. Oh, and I said I would show Claire's gift that I'm making. It was supposed to be for Christmas last year. Now her birthday is in January, so anything that doesn't make it for Christmas can be a birthday gift, but that also didn't happen last year. And my plan is to try and finish this around the time for her birthday. And what I'm making for her is a double knit scarf. And double knitting is a technique where you create something with mirrored images on the front and back. There is no right or wrong side to it. There's just two fronts. And you create mirror images with the opposite colors. So I'm making her this scarf. And this is the beginning of it and the other side. <clears throat> and let's see, you can, if you hold it in person and look at it, you can tell where I left off last year, where I started this year, which is right around here, because my gauge is a bit better this year. It's steadier, the stitches are less, they're tighter, they're not as loose, and so it, Claire doesn't care, um, but I care. I like to have something that looks well made. So, I this scarf does not have its own pattern. What I did is I spent like a week, um, <coughs> I spent a week picking out elements that she would like from free and paid patterns on Ravelry and I put them together. And so this octopus is from, it's just a free chart called Octopus Chart by Sarah Kelly. And this mermaid part is a free water bottle cozy pattern called Mermaid Water Bottle Cozy by Jennifer Still. And some of the other things coming up are going to be, um, actually what's coming next is pigs because Claire likes pigs. So pigs and a fairy and mushrooms and kittens and a castle and a really gorgeous night sky that is based off of sock pattern that I love. Um, oh. And it's a little tricky to tell. There's also this swirly bit. I don't remember what that's called or where that's from. But I will be sure to tell you next video when I show you my progress. So I have done this much since I started, which was after I made the last video. And the rows are kind of slow because you do one stitch on this side, one stitch on that side, one stitch on this side, one stitch on that side. So it's knit, purl, knit, purl, knit, purl the whole way. Um, which is slow, it just is. Uh, I'm knitting this out of Knit Picks Hawthorne Tonal in Goddess and Hawthorne Speckle in Andromeda. So this purple is super dark and this one kind of looks like Lucky Charms or cereal or like the milk when you have all the sugary bits in at the end. It it really reminds me of cereal. <laughs> and yeah, she loves pink and purple. She likes blue. Um, the other day she told me her favorite color was blue and I was like, uh, okay, because it has never been blue. And then the chart, when you do a double knitting chart, your chart will look like this. And some of that might be paid, I'm sorry. Uh, I, there. Your chart will look like this. And basically you go across, you start at the bottom side and go across. And every time you see, a, for me, when I see a light one, it is the main color of that side. And then you come back out the other way and you, oh here's a dark one that's going to be the contrast color for that side and so you can't just have this is always purple because on half of the rows your contrast is going to be the pink so it, it is definitely a more complicated technique um, but very satisfying to do the trick really is how do you manage your yarn um, you could just when you're knitting along you can have them both in this hand and go one at a time. We're going to knit, going to purl, going to knit, going to purl, back and forth. Or you could have one 
in each hand, which is how I've been liking my stranded knitting lately. For color work, I have been doing one of, of each hand going like that. So it's pretty quick. Another way is to have both of them on this side and then you can just pick which one you want, which is good, except they kind of start to get tangled and slim together like that. And so what I asked for last year for Christmas, and I put this down because I was frustrated about, about yarn management, uh, I asked for Christmas was this yarn thimble. And what you do, you stick it on your finger and you put one part, one strand of yarn through here and one strand of yarn through there. And you kind of squeeze that, the yarn coming through your fingers in some way that works. I kind of do it a little different every time I knit. So I haven't settled into a firm way yet. And you hit, hold that and then you can get your strands because it holds them separate for you. And so you can take the one you want and it's not very hard. But I think that works better for color work knitting than for double knitting because double knitting is knit purl, knit purl. And so you're constantly moving your finger. When I have it on this finger, it's in and out and in and out. And that can make it a little tricky to, to grab my knitting when it's not always in the same spot. It makes it trickier to hold the yarn tight, but it is the most manageable so far. And also something that a technique that really helps for double knitting is so your pattern has these lines here on the grid, the dark lines. And what I did is I put corresponding um, stitch markers. So you can see I have these stitch markers every five, every five stitches, you know, it's not really five, it's 10 because there's two for each stitch, the front and the back. And then at the end, I was still getting confused which stitch marker was at. So I actually color coded them for the stitch markers on, on here. They're different colors now. And that helped a lot. So that helps the, the easier just to keep track of your yarn and keep track of where you on the pattern will make you knit your pattern faster. So those tips you can really apply to any knitting, especially with a chart. Um, have it separated by stitch markers that you can correspond really easily and that will help you to keep your place. And then crossing off when you've done that row, just cross it out. Or you can use a highlighter or something. The problem with something like mittens or socks though is you're going to do it again. So you can cross it out or you can check mark it, but you're going to need to do it twice. So maybe cross it out with a highlighter and then the next go do a black marker or something. And then that way you can still use that pattern again for your second one. Or if you do it on your tablet or your phone, you can just highlight it and it won't be a problem. Or you can find an app where you can put a bar on it to show where you are and you can move the bar. There's a lot of ways to manage your chart, but the more, the better managed your chart is, the quicker and easier it will be to do your knitting or to come back to your project after you've been away from it for a little while. So that's for Claire. Um, I'm making this for her because I have already made a double knit scarf for my oldest diggery. And at the time I couldn't decide if I wanted uh, trains or if I wanted construction vehicles. And so I decided the insane decision to do both. And so I had trains on one side and construction vehicles on the other side. Oh. And the way double knitting works is you knit, purl, knit, purl, knit, purl. And then when you want to do the contrast, you switch which yarn you're knitting and purling with. And so every time I want a picture here, I use purple and, and the background will be pink. And when I switch, it will do the exact mirror image on the other side. But what you, you can do it is do whichever side, whichever color you want in a given time. And that's basically called extreme double knitting where they are not the same. And so that means two charts that you have to keep track of two charts that you go back and forth and back and forth and the color keeps switching, which is the main color or not. And so when I did that, I started when Diggory was two and found out this was really hard. And so I put it, I worked on it, didn't finish it, put it aside, brought it back next fall and worked on it and gave it to him when he was three. And, and the whole time I was like, 
this sort of project I will do four times and that is it. Four times for four kids and that is it. And now that I'm coming to the next kid to get a scarf, I'm like, it doesn't have to be extreme. I can pick stuff I like. And so I curated this scarf and designed it just for her with elements she likes and it will not be extreme double knitting. It will be regular double knitting and it will be gorgeous. So I'm really excited to do that. I'm not really excited for knitting it. The process itself um, is kind of stressful because I'm trying to do it to a deadline. So I might end up being a late birthday gift that was less stressful to make. We'll see. I The thing is, I like to work on relaxing things when I'm in bed. Either relaxing or that tricky part that I couldn't do in the daytime. Um, and this is just... It's not that you have to be mentally engaged the whole time, but it's not quite relaxing and it's not quite mentally demanding. I don't know, but it is satisfying. I'm constantly thinking about how I'm holding my yarn too, so that's hard. Now I want to show you the one I made for Diggory, so I will go get that. Here we go. The things that go scarf. So this has a train. It spells Diggory on it. And I used a tonal yarn, Sweet Georgia Yarns Tough Love Sock in Fern, and then Knit Pick Stroll in Peapod. And sometimes it didn't contrast quite as well as I would like because the tonal yarn had some lighter parts in it. And then this side is the construction vehicle side. And I'm very proud <laughs> of this scarf. It was such a hard pattern. No, kind of. It was such an intense design and pattern. Um, and I found myself really enjoying like these big pockets here where it was solid on one side and solid on the other. That came few and far between. So Claire's scarf will not be quite as intense as this, but I think she will love it just as much because it will have a bunch of elements she likes just the way this one has a ton of elements, a ton, had a bunch of elements that Diggory liked. So. Yeah. So I think that's it for this week. I'm going to turn this off and then start filming my part two of the holiday episode. I'm planning to do a third part right before Christmas and then post it and I'll have a three part holiday episode Christmas Eve or so and I'll share the gift knitting that I've been working on. So yeah, thank you for coming and thank you for watching, for commenting and um, being here and joining me and being a part of this. Thank you so much. So. Merry Christmas, thanks, and bye for now.